Hey, how's it going? I'm here on the show floor at EGX 2015 and we've seen a lot of amazing games today, but what we haven't seen a lot of yet is the incredible amount of talent here at the Indie Mega Booth and today it's all about the Indie. Right, it's time to check out the Indie sector and see what they're up to and our first stop was this interesting boss battler for the PC, Isbara. Uh, Isbara is a mix between a platform game and a volatile game in which you control a small character which uh, fights very big uh, boss. Every level is a boss fight. So you don't shoot the enemies, you just uh, dodge the bullets they send to, uh, on you. And you, you have to activate the cannons to destroy their shield and survive while you are making a big spell to, to punch them. So there is uh, 18 different bosses in the game. Each boss is uh, unique and uh, has uh, its own patterns. So you have something like uh, nine hours of gameplay. We wanted to make a real unique experience because people are afraid by uh, the bullet health. So we wanted to, to, to make an accessible uh, gameplay for bullet hell. So we, we, we have made Isbara. I got to bash out a couple of levels on Isbara and it's immense fun. And they really have created something unique and engaging. You can get it on Steam right now for about £10, so go check it out. Round in the corner we spotted this gem of a game that you may have heard of. Project Zomboid has been in development for around four years now, but they're getting super close to a full finish release. And if you haven't heard of it, here's Andy Hodgetts with the lowdown. Project Zomboid is basically a hardcore zombie apocalypse survival sandbox game uh, where you're an average character, so you're not, uh, you're not immune to the infection, you're not um, a military person, you're just a, a regular average person trying to survive in a regular American suburban town in the zombie apocalypse. Uh, it's basically an isometric game, so you're, you're playing from the top down, uh, but you can only see what your character can actually see. So we have a full line of sight system. Um, so you have to be very, very aware of what's around you at all times, being very, very careful, because zombies will be attracted to sight, sound, smell, all that stuff. So basically, uh, you have to be very, very careful, make as little noise as possible, which is why things are like firearms, although they're very effective weapons, they're very noisy weapons, so they can often be more dangerous than they are helpful. The game's available on Steam Early Access, um, so it's available right now, uh, but we're, uh, we've been developing for about four years, so it's kind of like we every version of the game we put out is always a stable uh, build. We have like an opt-in beta for trying the new features of the game. Um, so we've been on Early Access for a couple of years now, and we're, we've basically got a two, two or three big features left to go, and then we're at 1.0. Brilliant zombie game and it's available for you to try now through Steam, so go get it. From zombies to fantasy anime turn based battlers, we had a chat with Andrew Livy about Tears of Avia, his studio's current Kickstarter venture. Let her rip, Andy. So Tears of Avia is a turn based tactical RPG. Uh, we've got a keen focus on build craft, uh, so we plan for hundreds of skills to be in the game. You can only choose a real small select a number of skills to bring with you to the battle. Additionally, weapons uh, have skills bound to them as well. So you could put like a chalice in the hands of a warrior and then they gain healing skills if you so choose. Uh, another key thing that we want to include in the game is a really dynamic story. So we plan for you to be able to play with up to 16 characters. Uh, you can only bring five in your party, but they all have different dispositions towards one another. Um, the party we got in the demo here, they get along quite well. Um, but uh, there are some characters that are a bit distrustful of others, uh, some jealous um, of some, uh, even a bit of fear going among some of the characters. So uh, the story kicks off uh, with the events uh, several hundred years prior to the game. Uh, there's a massive invasion that uh, is stopped by a mage by the name of Jolentine. He casts a massive spell that freezes the invasion in its tracks crashes the city of Avalon into a mountainside, freezing it over. Um, but there was an unforeseen consequence of that, in that he trapped the love of his life, Avia, in the same spell. And he's been trying to seek a way to try and free her from the spell or undo the spell ever since. And only when you start stepping in do you start finding ways to undo the spell. And that's pretty much the course that you go through during the game. Yeah, check out our website, uh, tearsofavia.com. You can also hit us up on Twitter and Facebook, at Tears of Avia and Tears of Avia on Facebook. Um, check our Kickstarter out. Um, if you like what you see, please support us. We really need your help. 
It's shaping up really nicely and with Andy putting in a lot of the work himself on many aspects of the game, he's now at a point where help from the community is really needed. We love what we played and it's a good strategic turn based game with a nice story and beautiful character art. If you're interested, head on over to Kickstarter and send them some love. And money, that helps too. And last but not least for our indie roundup is pretty much my favourite game of EGX 2015. Here's Christo, a top bloke with a great personality and a great concept for a game. Okay, so Super Mixtape is a game where you play on the A side and the B side of a cassette, but it's homage to the retro era in terms of the mechanical elements and thinking about how they can translate into a game. So. I really like audio and there's so many people out there who love good tunes and just everything crazy, you know? So like, I've set it up in terms of that memory of like cassettes. Like if you're one minute into the A side, you've got one minute left on the B side. So you've got to play backwards with your track and then like, yeah, it's a bit crazy and all over the place, but yeah. So I'm five months into development at the moment. Um, yeah, five months in, and this is the second iteration of the game. And then I've decided to come with a double booth um, for EGX, just to get as much feedback as possible. And then because there's only me working on the build, I can do fast iterations, make improvements, pushing out new builds every week, and just constantly improving it. Um, I just want to make sure that when I release the game, it's as polished as it can be, and I put my everything into it, you know? And like, I think if I, if I put a passion in the build, like that might show through, and hopefully people enjoy it, you know? So, so far, the only way you can play it is here at the moment. Um, and then I'm hoping early 2016, going straight on the Steam and console, but it all depends at the moment on sort of uh, who I sign with and those sort of things. Um, but definitely Steam, like, don't want to shout out the indie community, you know? Like, I might put up a cheeky little web build for a while so people can just go on and play and I can get more feedback then and yeah, get people playing, you know. Being a bedroom developer is tough, but Christo is working really hard to bring this lovable game to life. We can't wait to see where this one goes and we really hope that he gets a great publisher. Well, we've seen many amazing things at EGX 2015. We've laughed, we've cried, we've drank way too much Tornado Energy Drink, and sadly for us, our time at EGX has had to come to an end. Wow, EGX 2015, Christo, what a top bloke. <laughs> yeah, he was really sound, that, that, really funny guy. That game was amazing, super mixtape, definitely check it out, definitely go, I'm, I'm, I wanna buy that. Christo, definitely, I need yeah. a copy of this game. <laughs> no, I can't, can't wait to see what he does with it and where oh, yeah. it goes. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun to play, so well done, mate. But uh, yeah, the rest of the show, uh, Amazing! There's so much talent there at the uh, the indie game um, uh, section, and uh, I've actually we've got to make a big apology uh, to uh, Nature's Zombie Apocalypse. Unfortunately, during your interview, our sound equipment conked out, so we we had to cut it. We're really sorry, but uh, to anyone that's interested, go and check out Nature's Zombie Apocalypse because it's a great game. Zombie mayhem with animals and flamingo cannons. Yeah, flamingo cannons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just go and check it out. But uh, yeah, no, a massive thank you to everyone that attended EGX. You're all amazing, and you're all so creative. And it's a shame that we couldn't get round to everyone, and uh, otherwise the video would have been ten days long. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, there were some incredible looking games there, and yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully it just keeps going. This, yeah. this this indie market is getting you know really big, and there's something you know incredible ideas out there like that. What's that Starship one that you played? Oh yeah, yeah, Starship Mechanic. Yeah, I got I got a I got a badge because I did really well. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, I'm a qualified ensign, and it's a game about uh, uh, you have to you're an engineer. The, the guy the guy said to me, it's a Scotty simulator. So you <laughs> you're on an engineering deck in a spaceship, and you basically got to run around and fix everything, and load weapons, and repair shields, and uh, you get orders from the captain, and it's uh, it's like a managing kind of uh, system. But uh, that was really awesome, and like uh, I can't wait to play that as well when that comes out. Yeah, uh-huh. But uh, yeah, and also the big games. The yeah, big yeah. Games. yeah, the EGX this year had had some real big games. So, ones. Yeah, uh, Ubisoft had a big presence there, Tom mm -hmm. Clancy's The Division, mm -hmm. Rainbow Six Siege, the new Assassin's Creed obviously, yeah. and then we've got Just Cause 3. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there's some real big games there. And, and also the, uh, the Star Wars Battlefront as well yes. from uh, mm -hmm. EA. Uh, which is looking really, really cool. Yeah, it's going to be a, a great end to the year, I think, all yeah. these uh, big games. Yes, absolutely. It's a shame that, yeah, we couldn't get around uh, to, to everything, but uh, to everyone that we did get around and everyone that did speak to us and gave us a great interview and great feedback, thank you. Thank you so much. And also, 
a big shout out to uh, Yoshida-san uh, for meeting us and saying hello and, and doing that little thing for our the channel. The intro like, to our video. It yeah. was so awesome. And uh, yeah, and your presentation on the 20 years of, of uh, PlayStation is it was fantastic. It was a great, great insight into a great man. So uh, on, on that uh, end note, uh, that's all the time we've got for. I hope you've enjoyed the EGX coverage that we've uh, delivered. If you have, don't forget to leave us a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. We do content all the time three videos a week or, or whatever we can manage so uh, if you like what you've seen then please come back for more and also drop us a comment um, let us know what your favourite moments of uh, EGX were, were you there, were you a cosplayer what happened let us know, did you try some of that horrible energy drink <laughs> seriously it gave me flutters <laughs> and uh, how, many, how many other people out there took way too long working out how to open that can yeah, it was scary. Yeah, Considering was, we were all supposed to be gamers and think about things logically, yeah. we get handed a cannon. It was like, like a puzzle. Yeah. I, I felt like I was I was a dog trying to play a banjo, trying to get it out. <laughs> I was like, oh. Anyway, yabbered on for long enough. Uh, that's all the time we've got for today. I've been Bren. I've been Jay. And we've been Game Gasm. <laughs>